Shall we start now, sir? Hello. Shall we start now, sir? Yeah, yeah, definitely, sir. Please. Hello, everyone. Present here virtually. I am Pallavi here, and I welcome you all for today's four five day workshop. which is titled as photography in dentistry and application of macro photography and today is fourth day of workshop and today's topic is processing of images and presenting this session we have with us our today's expert dr hiroj bagre sir he dr hiroj bagre sir has completed his master in dental surgery department of periodontology in the year 2014 He has completed in MBA in hospital management and clinical research from Symbiosis University, India. He has completed PhD in dental sciences in year 2018. He is currently a faculty as an associate professor in a esteemed dental college. He is the recipient of honorary best academician, best dental photographer, and best tutor in various awards. He is currently. in george in growth factor and its use by the study on platelet rich fibrin without wasting much time sir i am welcome to dr hiroj bagre sir you may start now sir thank you very much research circle uh, for giving me this opportunity and again i welcome you all uh, for the day 4 yesterday we finished off with few aspects of mobile photography uh, in cases of dental as well as macro today uh, the session will be short but it will be one of those sessions which you will be having a practical experience with uh, something related to image processing first of all let me uh, tell you all that this uh, workshop is being carried out for dental and macro photography as many of you have told that sir we uh, need to have something more about photography is an evolution uh, in other parts such as landscape portrait and all we'll definitely meet some time uh, for a hands on course for this but uh, for macro photography there are uh, uh, as i have told yesterday day before yesterday there are limitations to it and hands on program for this uh, will be Uh, a good thing for you to interact with me so that you get to know about those things by uh, not by virtual things but by coming and meeting me personally today we will be dealing with image processing here so first of all i'll just tell you why we need an image processing just go through this photograph over here we have different kinds of shades of the same area which has been clicked we have color changes we have opacity luminosity changes we have other filters associated with what kind of uh, images we need see this is around a bit more towards cyan color now this is not what is called as real what i was talking about white ba white balance today was this we are going to have a white balance setup at 5600 or 5500 kelvins this is supposed to be this is supposed to be a benchmark or a gold standard for you all to set so that the image has its own color reproduction every time whenever you click whether it be mobiles whether it be dslr photographs both of them will definitely require the changes in the white balance of the particular image so why this is important how can we achieve this this is all a part of the image processing first of all i will tell you it's a very big big uh, and a huge uh, uh, thing to learn about image processing in one hour or 45 minutes i am just going to wrap up with small things which you can just do by simple softwares no need to buy any uh, high i means buy any um, extravagant softwares for this we are going to deal with small softwares like picasa which is available free which is by the name of adobe photoshop again you can buy this but i will just demonstrate how we are going to deal with a photograph of course that photograph is uh, uh, having uh, lots of mistakes inside it but we will try and correct whatever corrections are there you will be able to see visually see what corrections are there which are been done inside the photograph so that this processing part 
actually processing part takes lots and lots of efforts lots and lots, lots of learning inside but it is going to be very helpful for you all so that we'll be just seeing it visibly that what changes are occurring inside the patients photograph next so <clears throat> essential dental portfolio see these are all the images which are being taken by tslrs and we require them for our full mode documentation of any case for whether it be anterior aesthetics whether it be implants whether it be any kind of restorative work we are going to have use of these kinds of uh, photographic portfolio for the patient <coughs> as i have given one uh, dental photography uh, what we call as consent form that has to be filled uh, by the patient signed by the patient on the day when you are going to click these photographs and it has to be maintained for uh, a good uh, period of time so that you are not falling into uh, any kind of medical legal uh, cases or you are having a very good documentation and you can explain it to the patient as this is just a, a start of what image processing is we are going to have a very good um, rapport with the patient so that in in future he can uh, definitely refer uh, other patients uh, to us so that he is well satisfied with what he has been treated with and so also it is for us also to learn what mistakes and what rectifications are needed in the next coming stage steps so that it is very good for us to uh, give a very uh, good treatment to the patient now as i have mentioned in this image this is the first image as i have shown in this image called as the facial profiles as well as the intraoral facial aspect of the patient these are the lateral aspects these are the facial aspects these are the occlusal aspects of both the jaws and we are going to have a patient to be seated upright then we are going to have the portfolio of the patient can it, it can be in the form of the whole of the head this is the facial profile of the patient we can have an intraoral setup for having the anteriors to be sitting after this <clears throat> we are going to have drying of this area we are going to have the saliva to be taken off from that area we are going to have very uh, means what we call as a smooth flow of some air so that there is no other kind of uh, saliva salivary droplets over there water droplets over there so that it is a very clean field can you see this image this is again taken by dslr and twin flash system we are going to have a very clean image there are use of this kind of <coughs> retractors called as cheek retractors cheek retractors are to be bought at a very precise manner cheek retractor should not be having this kind of a loop they are supposed to be separate from each other i am going to give that images next they are going to be separate cheek retractors for both the sides the patient even can hold or an assistant can hold this kind of retractors on both the sides and they have to be retracted outwards and away from the patient outwards and away from the patient so that you have a very good area of visi visibility and your light goes and hits every corner we cannot we we will not be happy with getting any shadows in that area where we are going to have our focus so this is for the facials these are again for the laterals of the patient can you see the indirect image over here so we are using mirrors these mirrors can be in the form of titanium rhodium coated can be in the form of normal plain mirrors which are available in the market but titanium or rhodium coated mirrors are called as the gold standard for any kind of dental photography this is because it is because of the reflective power of the mirror normal mirrors can be used definitely but you will have something called as a ghost image over there two mirror, two images will be seen just slightly away from each other so it is not good for us we can have very good amount of uh, uh, ghost ghost called as ghost images inside when we use a normal mirror so that's why i recommend rhodium coated mirrors these mirrors are readily available in the market and but a bit costly but they are very good for you to buy and purchase for one time so that and it has to be handled very carefully you know, because scratches 
because uh, they are going to eat go and uh, go inside oral cavity so sterilization is uh, must protocol for that so we are going to have rhodium coated mirrors over here and we are going to indirectly click this we can indirectly click this image by use of this mirror so we can utilize the mirror for lateral aspects we can utilize the mirrors for the occlusal aspects for the maxilla as well as for the mandible you can see how good the images come when we go for the laterals so we are going to have very sharp image with them because macro lenses are again used this is a drawback for mobile photographs where this kind of clarity is not expected then we are going to have <coughs> smooth diffusion of light because of the flash system which has been used and we are going to have very clear mentioning of what kind of treatment is going on for the facial or the lateral aspects of the patients then now this is again a setup where this again mouth cheek retractor is been used and this mirror is been used inside to get the occlusal aspect of the patient can you see the occlusal aspect though so this is the holding of a syringe which will blow air so that there is no kind of mist over here or any kind of fog which is associated inside when we click so it has to be 45 degrees to the uh, uh, axis of the plane of the occlusal plane and it has to be 45 and we are going to supposed to click, click it indirectly so that the lights fall and the image is been taken for this mirror image so that's why mirrors are very much important then we'll get such kind of an image of this and so we can crop it and we can edit it which will be i'll be teaching you through some softwares today <coughs> i'm going fast through this because we need to know about image processing here then again the occlusal aspects rubber dam has been applied already there is good amount of isolation so we can dry it area dry the area properly we can have a crop factor associated with the image because macro definitely will have good sharp images you can definitely crop the image properly so that you get to know what kind of area is in the focus facial profile interpupillary line is the line which i have already explained for the horizontal axis as well as the vertical axis of the patient the lateral views the frontal view of the patient and the lateral oblique views are the views which are been expected for the extraoral portion of the patient where the extraorally images are being uh, captured so we are having lateral aspects frontal views of the patient and the lateral oblique views <coughs> i especially taken this image from google this is because uh, i need to tell what what is wrong inside this we are having one light which is been used and today we are going to process an image i have kept an image which is totally wrong in what what has been captured so we will we will enjoy what uh, changes are going to happen inside the image i recommend not to go for more amount of image processing because it will hamper the ratio of what your image has been taken in would it it will there will be loss of the details of the image there will be crop factor associated so once you finalize your image inside the camera it has to be near to the perfect because we are not expecting changes much more to be happening inside the image after we are going to get it into post processing so i recommend not to post -process, process more of this kind since into the image because that will again hamper whatever you have taken whatever good work you have done it will hampering your good work by not taking good photographs so evidence based dentistry is now nowadays a key factor which is being played evidence has to be maintained for us to show to all the people because we are supposed to have good kind of uh, association with the patients in the long term so this image this image this image will be having uh, a particular kind of cant we we call it as a cant so this cant will tell you about what what we are going to deal we are going to have something called as the cheek retractors coming inside the image we are supposed to not have this then we are going to have a slight change in the angulation of the image can you see the class slant of the image you are supposed to have the image to be at an horizontal plane we are supposed to take the image in such a manner that the camera and the focus which i had showed in this image can you see this image it is directly perpendicular to the area where we are going to take the patient so we can raise the chair we can make the patient sit at a particular area in the uh, in the chamber or the clinic so that we 
get to have a very uh, good vision of the area which has been clicked so we are supposed to be the person who are going to decide what kind of image has to be taken so we are not supposed to have the cans over here this is the thing which has to be corrected again in the post processing we have to remove this area so that's why the hooked ones are not uh, been uh, taken into consideration we have to have separate chic retractors for both and then after correction of the scan i will be having corrections in the color balance can you see some yellowish tinge on one side there is more light on other side there is very less light we are having black backgrounds in the behind, in behind. so this is just a wrong image not to be taken misaligned image this there not to be taken in such a form even though lights are natural in nature color is natural in nature this image will definitely be very troublesome when we are doing the post processing so keeping this in mind we will process for a very simple software called as picasa okay so let me share picasa i have already opened an image so as you see intraoral image facial profile see it is better to understand uh, hands on but uh, okay fine for me to uh, make you understand what kind of changes we are expecting inside this now procedure wise we are looking at an image a bit not not that much of uh, uh, cant is there so we are going to go directly i just uh, take that there are images uh, options here can you see this crop straighten red eye auto contrast auto color retouch text fill light now <clears throat> what we are going to expect is we are going to check something called as histogram can you see the histogram over here this is the histogram of the camera and information which has been mentioning the color system and the luminosity and the white balance inside this now why this is important is we are going to manipulate this we are going to process this why why need to process this because see even if this is an image definitely it is a good image no no it's not a good image because the same colors are not reproduced the same colors have to be if if these colors have to be sent to the lab for lab work definitely will give you a yellow crown can you see every, everything everywhere there is yellowness yellowness in the picture even on the face there is yellow because the light which has been used is either from a uh, mobile which is again harsh yellow and either the white balance is not properly maintained so for us white balance how it is going to be checked check and how it is going to be changed in the processing that is one simple click inside picasa i'll tell you how but you need to learn for this histogram first can you see all the colors are there red green blue so rgb system he is following rgb system so rgb system rgb stands for red green blue so we are going to have manipulation and the processing of the rgb data of the patient here i'm just explaining see it is very brief for you to understand it is a very big vast topic i take a lecture and for about 3 to 4 days for processing to be learned this is just for you to understand what what is the importance of histogram histogram this histogram will tell you something on left more of the shift is towards the left very small amount of characters are there in the middle and and in the right side it is again a very thin line can you see this line very thin only the red portion is reaching to the thin means our colors are not uniformly present inside the graphs i need to get it uniform that is my that is my uh, motto behind learning a histogram and changing into the processing now see what what changes i am going to do first of all i am going to have a crop then we are going to have it is just going line by line i will just have a crop now when i go to the crop i am having manual settings i am having current ratio 4 is to 3 small prints large prints full page cd cover many many options are there the most important accepted format is 16 is to 9 i'll just select that okay then from this criteria i will just see the thing which is been inside the oral cavity i i am not going to have this i don't want the eyes i don't want the nose i don't want the cheek retractor i want see again the cheek retractor here is taken is wrong it has to be two separate cheek retractor so that this lip whatever has been fallen is not going to fall so my aim was to have something called as a good image 
but without these things. So it is again a very bad thing that the doctor has taken something called as lip drop here. Okay. See, that's why I've got you an image which is having multiple amount of differences. What you are supposed to click. So you should understand why this is not to be used like this. These cheek retractors are falling. The lip should be inside the cheek retractor. So the light is not going inside. Can you see? One side the teeth are not there visible. One side the whole of the teeth are visible. So it is not a good image. The light is falling majorly on the cheek retractors and the central incisors. Can you see the central incisors are totally bright in nature? We don't want this kind of images. So just just we'll make it some more beautiful so that it is acceptable somewhat somewhat acceptable not at least 10 percent of it should be acceptable we'll go ahead for crop first now i selected for 16 is to 9 i'll just go and crop to the area which is which is needed by my side just to go to the anterior aspects some amount of cheek retractor see now what is what is the difficulty with me I am getting still cheek retractors inside. So it is again a thing which has to be kept in mind when you click a photograph. Your image should not have these cheek retractors. Neither it should have any type of gloves, any kind of finger pulling. No, no, nothing should be there, which will hamper the processing of the image. Now, let me go to that area. Okay. Now, we can preview that area. There is one preview button here. Once you preview, you get to see it for a few seconds. You can apply it. Now the cropped image looks like this. Can you see the image now? Somewhat better, better than the previous one. The previous one, because we can now zoom it a bit to see what kind of changes are going to happen. I hope I, I hope all of them are going to uh, seeing this image because it is a uh, practical hands-on. Now we are going to straightening the image. If if needed, you just go and see the check. Check, check the horizontal lines and the vertical lines. If there is some cant needed to be corrected, we can shift the image to the left. We can shift the image to the right. We are going to have slight changes here because it was taken a bit uh, fine with the angulation here. Now we are going to have work on this. <clears throat> Next, auto contrast, auto color is for those who don't have time. Just press this button, it will change the auto contrast system. But for me, we are going to play around with the lights, highlights, shadows, colors. Now see, as I have cropped the image, there is a change in the histogram. Earlier one, it was shifting here, right? Now it has shifted to the right more. So we are having something called as red to be more. Already it is yellow more, red more, less of blues and greens. So we will have a shift of colors. Now, color temperature and one dropper is here. Can you see the neutral color picker? It is called as neutral color picker. This is same. See, all these are inside Photoshop. I'm not teaching you Photoshop today because I know it will be very difficult for you all to understand this. But definitely natural color picker. Now, neutral color picker, neutral for dentistry is something called as gray. something called as gray. So we have gray cards associated. We place the card here inside the oral cavity and we click the photo. For us, gray is the new white. So for us, we, we need something white. So we'll have something called as gray card here, assigning just besides where the area has to be clicked. We will click on, we'll pick the color neutral gray or white. See, allows you to see what, what when I go over there, it says, allows you to pick a neutral gray or white part of the photo to remove color cast. This is all yellow. Just see what changes are happening. Just see. I've taken this and I've dropped. My dropper is now, I've picked this white line. Can you see it is more of white? I'll just go and click there. Fine. There are changes. There are definitely changes. Good changes. White light. Reddish nature of the gingiva. We are having changes in the histogram. What, what I have done is I have picked something called as neutral. I will just again go back. I will just go again go back. Go back. See yellow? It was totally yellow. You just go and hit the where we are. The neutral color picker. 
again go and hit the yellow white see there are dram dramatic changes are there definitely you will be having a pleasant image here that one was total yellow this is natural color which has been now still the histogram is not that much uniform so we will have changes in fill light see how the fill light if i increase the light it will again shift to the right so i don't want the fill light to be more if you are going to go with the highlights again there is a shift if you are going with the shadows there is a shift to the left right so we will just play around with this my uniformity has the arrived can you see the uniformity earlier one it was here later on after crop it was here now there is uniformity of what data is been available again we can have temperature of the image temperature this is what what was called as 5600 kelvin we are going nearby to it so i want something not yellow this was yellow this is again cyan don't want that i will go in between so that my histogram shows some what changes see now this is not beautification but this is what is called as image processing but this image processing i am i am again telling you this is what is a free software can be easily done for every image because see we don't have uh, to over process the image we are supposed to have a neutral color picker we should have something called as histogram tuning even if you want something called as shade matching when we do composites and all we can use the black and white filter there is one black and white filter now you just can imagine how the image was and how the image has been changed definitely all can uh, justify with this again now i want something called as composites to be checked i'll just click on this composites will be buttons will be kept here and we definitely when we can definitely have the changes to be noticeably seen when we are using this kind of black and white so we are going to have a very good image i have just taken out we can definitely work around with focal focal white black and white see now uh, there is something called as focal focal black and white i can just select the area which i want it to be in red can you see i can shift i can shift the colors if i want half of the thing to be in black and white definitely i can increase the size somewhat size i have increased color changes are there definitely you can play around this is not with the normal processing of the image but you can play around you can increase the sharpness of the image can you see the increase of the sharpness and the sharpness of the focal black and white so this is again the same thing where one has to highlight this area definitely i can highlight this by by the use of so i can again shift the area also can you see the shifting of the area if i want to show this much only in my social media i'll definitely have this to be so all parameters can be changed tweaked so that we can have if you can even if you can have in, increase in the saturation of the image can you see the saturation to be increasing decreasing but now i don't want that because i have already worked with my fine tuning of the image so after this after this processing we are going to have something called as text can you see the text text here why i am going to play around and write something in the image is because this is my copyright so i am going to write something as my name i can increase the size to see how in between i can keep that image so that nobody copies it from my source i can decrease the transparency of the image not visible for everyone but definitely it's a called as a watermark i put a watermark inside now this is the text watermark you can even add add images over here definitely but images are not recommended i will recommend to have a text in between where others cannot copy now comes the time for you to export this image after you apply this all things will be done you can go to file you can go and export picture or save as the picture go and save this picture to whatever name and whatever area we want and just that so i hope you understand uh, the use of picasa again this is a basic software not having too much of tweaks inside but definitely you can work around with uh, the image now the image the software which i have opened again we are having very
something called as uh, by the name of adobe photoshop adobe photoshop again the same thing we are having multiple tools here you can just go and see the, all of this tool and this is a free software adobe 7.0 is free cs4 is there available online you can buy it and but you will have to pay some amount of it so we can have edit of the image we can definitely do the adjustment we can do color balance here just see the color balance we can definitely change the colors we can change with the magenta we can have picker auto picker again auto picker is here uh, where is auto picker yeah so we are having the auto picker here so it will just change what kind of things we need to change inside so for me you uh, need to start off with picasa first so that you can definitely work around and learn more of photoshop and that is will be basically covered in the advanced courses of what basic uh, rental art photography is about so this is uh, for the image processing at a very short time you can definitely work for at least 2 or 3 minutes for basic processing you need not to have processing to be over over means it it should not be so so much that uh, it will be uh, difficult for you to do also and difficult for uh, you to understand also after this in the post processing i am going to tell you about one more software very important for us for any kind of work related to image processing just i'll just go and select this open with something called as irfan view this software is called as irfan view now irfan view also has many many options you can change with the histogram you can adjust the color sharpen image effects but there is one good very good quality of irfan view is that you can resize the image you can resample the image you just click on resize and resample you just have a short talk about what is uh, this uh, about this is going to have current size of the image can you see the current size of the image definitely it is given we have to change it suppose see if, suppose if i want to fit it in 640 by 480 pixels directly click here it will change the current size to this and you are supposed to place okay for any kind of adjustment in dpi this is required whenever you are going to take prints of the images dpi should be around 300 you can increase the dpi to 600 you can decrease the dpi to 90 whatever number is there you can decrease if you want to have something as a new size you can mention the new size manually you can set the size of the image say set the new megapixel for the image definitely whatever you have taken it should be having some amount of raw data that's why i'm talking or talking about raw so raw files will not open in inform you neither they will open in your uh, picasa they will open in something called as adobe camera raw camera raw good free software for all the people who can you uh, who are having raw inside their uh, cameras so this can help out in resizing i am utilizing this since ages so you can resize and resample so just simple click it is now 8k resolution i can increase the dpi to 300 then i can press okay it has resized the image again go file and save as the image you will uh, you will be asked about saving is an in a good quality definitely i want a good quality desktop again i'll go and save it as by number a after going here just see to edit image we are having to edit image properties of the image are definitely going to change i guess it's not working here so I'll just go around with my ppt okay so once we have done with this kind of processing which is basic see it's it was basic only for you to understand so that you understand where from where to click and how is the composition being made for dental photography same goes for macro photography for me processing is 5% only 5% maximum i increase or decrease the color contrast 
or i increase and decrease the exposure lights only on sometimes i crop sometimes i crop because when i click a photograph when i crop it it will again be having uh, some changes in the dimensions of the uh, or the pixelate pixelation of the image so don't want something to be so much zoomed inside and we are going to again going to deal with something called as blur of the image or can be in the form of haziness of the image we cannot get the details of the image so that's why macro must macro lens must proper al alignment of the patient and the doctor must definitely processing is a part of that to make people understand more but your processing should happen majorly inside the camera has not to be taken into consideration when we are taking uh, into software so hardly some amount of manipulation with your lights some contrast some color balances which i have just explained about white balance natural color pickers because we need some shade shades to be sent to the labs if we want to have a lab work to be done for this patient suppose if the example is this this tooth is having some spots here so i want to have corrections for this i am planning a veneer over here because i want to have something to be placed over this tooth so i will definitely have to be changing and giving this original data to the lab technician if, if i am not giving that technician uh, proper data definitely will give you a yellow crown he will give you a wrong shade crown so it will not match with what the patient is already having so again this again going back to the picture auto not expected daylight not expected flashlight has to be there flashlight that's why this is the white balance system which we are maintaining with the flash flash has to be set in such a way that it has to be 5500 or 5600 kelvins and this has to be maintained throughout all the pictures and it is very much important for you to have a perfect shade and perfect color balance perfect white balance to be inside the image whenever you are going to send it whenever you are going to display it when you are going to publish it so again i don't recommend to go for any kind of this thing these are all experimentations but for dental photography macro photography whenever you are using flash system inside definitely it has to be sync with the flash because these are the settings inside the white balance when you go to the menu button you definitely have a white balance setting and you can definitely work with flash white balance this is called as white balance balance and it has to be near to that to or to daylight directly to daylight it is very good daylight is one of the best lights because it will give you the same same temperature so that's why when the flash system is used we are going to have so we are going to record the cases in such a manner that the portfolio is complete pre and post operative as well as for inter operative we are going to have this kind of setup so that's why we need good assistance with us so that we can understand different kinds of processing hope so you all have understood a bit of it because uh, i again i want to tell this is a very tip of the iceberg very small amount of which has been explained but it is uh, for you to start off with your journey for uh, dental art photography hope we will meet sometime and have a very good interaction for uh, dental art photography as well as for motor macro photography both are the same parts uh, so i thank again research circle i will stop today here so for tomorrow session we will be having some applications of macro photography tomorrow so for me applications i will just share with all of you my different experiences with different kinds of uh, flash systems different kind of kinds of images which i have taken yet till date whatever has been experimented from my side for macro photography so tomorrow all the slides will be all of my uh, clicks which which will be going inside your heads hope so and that uh, you will enjoy all the uh, macro journey from start to end till now i am still learning i am still learning i am going through the phases of learning i because learning never stops for us so i hope so some amount of things of processing uh, have been gone through inside your head so that uh, you'll take these things into consideration whenever you want to click the image i thank again research circle i hope so uh, any queries if are there uh, i'll be happy to answer them thank you thank you so much sir hello, hello. Thank you so much, sir. Actually, your voice is not fine. Please. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. 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 Thank you so much,
Hello. Yeah, yeah, you are. So much, sir. Audible. Yeah, you are audible. Tell me. For this very informative and demonstrative session. Thank you. Very if much. anyone has any question, you can ask. I think no one has any question, sir. Okay, it's fine. Not an issue. Uh, thank you so much, all the participants, for your active participation. Let me inform to all that this complete session will be available on our Research Circle YouTube channel. So if you want to watch it again or want to share it to somebody, please do visit the Research Circle YouTube channel. Thanks. And last but not the least, Thank you, Hiroj Bagade, sir, for taking out the time for session. Let me inform to all that tomorrow is the fifth day of our workshop, which is titled as Application of Macro Photography on 3 p.m. So tomorrow, we will meet you same time. With our permission, sir, I would like to end today's session here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Risha Sakha. We'll meet you tomorrow. Bye.